phone tonight. Party's getting ready to start. I'm Mario, and that's Nicole. Hi. <laughs> Thirteen years ago, Mario came up with this great idea that he wanted me to quit um, my job that I had where I was running a company to start our own company. No idea of what we were going to do, right? right? Yeah. What it was going to be, but let's start our own company. I had a son, so it was pretty scary taking a jump and a leap with a two and a half year old son. After a few months of thinking about it, I decided, okay, let's take the jump. Mario was at a conference doing some interviews, and one of the people that he was interviewing was Stedman Graham. I remember Stedman just being like very much into what it was that Mario was saying. And then afterwards, Stedman was just like, I don't know what's in store for you, but I think there's going to be big things in store for you in the future. Continue on this path. And at that point, the light bulb went off for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. We need to build a platform and have an impact on the next generation, like Oprah's platform and Oprah did for our generation, our parents' generation. But we didn't know exactly what the show was going to be, no, we didn't. but we wanted to start building the brand so that we could start building a show. So he was doing local TV, local radio, then we moved on to national. And I would probably say three to four years into doing the business, we started pitching show ideas. Mario and his team with Shy started thinking of this like never settle concept. I think the way it actually started is I ended up doing a tweet. And at the end of the tweet, I hashtagged it never settle. And a bunch of people just started replying. And Shy and I were both like, whoa, there's something about that that people are tapping into. And we were like, how can we give back to others? And so we did a free program for the summer um, that just gave back because of the Never Settle Club. And then that thing started climbing. We took about a, almost a year pitching different networks. Right. And then once we realized like they weren't really biting, didn't seem to be excited, that's when we decided, okay, then we're gonna have to go and do this on our own. There was a lot of times when we just felt like it was too heavy and it was, it was too much and that we weren't gonna be able to really get to the dream that we really wanted to get to. Her mother was buying our groceries. You know, we're, our son is in, in daycare and in school and we're trying to like keep the roof over our head and keep things kind of sane. Bank accounts were in the red and negative. 401k was now gone. Credit card debt was to the max. When we hit our lowest low, Mario, we're scraping up coins to go to the coin machine so that you could get gas. Eventually, I get to pitching FedEx office. Fortunately, they came on board and sponsored, and that was a big, big thing. Because even with that, we still had to go into our own debt, into our own credit cards to fund the remaining piece. I charged the rest of the show 12 credit cards. <laughs> Is that not insane? How does it make you feel? And you're trying to figure out, okay, so who are you gonna, how are you gonna distribute this thing? So, you know, we're trying to pitch different people who we can partner with for distribution. And then we ended up with a great partnership with Entrepreneur. And then at that point, then it was just like, where are we gonna tape it? We did not have the funds, nowhere near anything to be able to do it in a, in a studio. They, they wanted 300, I got, I got pitches and proposals. Yeah. They wanted $300,000. $300,000. For us to like go into a studio for like a week to 10 days and shoot everything and be done. So then Mario started thinking creatively, like we, maybe we can partner with a company and, and the show is beneficial to them and we can do it with them. And sure enough, we partnered with Canary. And that's actually right here, 606 West 28th Street. And we launched our pilot season April of 2017. First time we came here, the first time we came here. When we came here, well, I was like so pumped. I walked into the spot. I was like, oh my gosh. At that moment, I was so just more grateful that we had something that we were going to make this the perfect thing that we could as much as we yep. could. And the other thing that happened during our journey, too, is Facebook Watch came out. So then it was this whole thing that we could actually live stream our show. So that then took it to a whole other level. At the same time, Al Roker came out with his live streaming company. We partnered with them. They helped us launch the show as well. So from Canary, season one ended. We were lucky enough to be approached by NASDAQ. Incredible jump from pilot season one to now pilot season two. Did the pilot combined with Canary and NASDAQ, uh, 11 episodes and unbelievable. We won an Emmy from our pilot season. You can feel daunted by all the things that got to come together, but they come together when they're supposed to, the way they're supposed to, if you just take action and then just like let go. So that ended December 2017 and literally every day 
January 2018 till now, we now have been working day and night tirelessly every single day for the past two years to now do the official launch of the Never Settle Show. I'm tired, Dee. <laughs> so we want you all to follow us along on this journey and be inspired for your things as well. You get all the exclusive behind the scenes. We're going to be showing you everything of the making of this show. You're not going to say nothing? Oh, you want to miss Absolutely. We Ready? definitely want to help you guys in any way possible. And hopefully you can take nuggets of what we're going through, our struggles, and apply it to yourself. And hopefully we can give you some inspiration that'll help you with whatever it is that you're, that you're going through. Okay. Now, I wanted y'all to see their story about Mario. Mario, we got a lot Last of school year, owners. Mastermind group collectively Hold on, let me stop that. Hold on one sec, Mastermind. Okay. All right, cool. Well, Chen, it's a pleasure to be here with you, man. I really appreciate it being here with the millionaire barber in the building right now. So I appreciate everybody that's all, all here and anybody that may watch this on replay. So you saw a little bit of the story. So the, the, the fast version of that is, the name is Mario Armstrong, Baltimore born. Uh, do all my work in New York City, but I'm from uh, Baltimore. Ended up developing our own company. We now have two companies, went in business with my wife, who's also the CEO of those businesses. And we ended up pursuing a passion of creating content that was gonna be inspirational for entrepreneurs. What we wanted to do was be able to share a lot of the lessons and the stories and the things that we have learned on our journey when we went bankrupt, as you saw, when we went broke, um, and really being able to show how we fought for our dream and how we could actually help others fight for theirs. And then what we wanted to do was interview other guests. And so as we started doing that, we started really networking and making good connections. And now I'm a partner with Damon John and his uh, Shark Speakers Group. And uh, we ended up getting two Emmy, two Emmy Awards uh, for the show. So these are real, it's not fake, it's real, it happened. Um, but we really pursued with clarity and commitment what it was and at the time you know we didn't have any safety net because it was my wife and i both in business together we're both pursuing this dream and how the whole thing really fell apart uh chin really we don't talk about it in this particular clip is that it all started back in around 2007 is when we opened the business and when we opened the business uh, we had a deal with um aol at the time we were going to be doing a video video blogging series for them this video blogging series was like a year and a half long contract. It was going to be $286,000 for this contract. So this contract was launching our business. And I had just gotten laid off in like 2006 from my job, but I had been side hustling all along. So if any of you have ever known what it's like to work at a job, but also side hustle on your dream, you know exactly what that's like. We lived that lifestyle. My wife was working a full-time job. She was doing well, but I asked her to leave that job, as you heard in the story, and go and, um, and, go and really run, the, run this company. And so we had this deal, man, and we were from Baltimore driving down I-95, uh, driving 995 South, headed to Dulles, Virginia. So we on the highway, driving to uh, Amer AOL's headquarters for what they call a signing party. Any contract that was over 250K, they would do these signing parties back then. And man, we get a phone call from this dude named David, who was our contact there. And David says, hey man, um, I'm, I, I can't believe I, I couldn't muster up the energy and the guts to call you a couple of days ago when I should have told you this, but we just got a new CEO on a few days ago and they put a freeze on all contracts that haven't been signed. So your contract isn't happening. And I'm like, bro, what do you, I don't understand what you're saying, David. Like we're on the car, we, we're like 40 minutes away from being, and he's like, I know, I, I feel horrible. I, I just couldn't muster up the energy to call you three days ago when I knew. He said, so I, I, I waited to the last moment. I really apologize. So I'm like, yo, what are you talking about, right? So I'm like, you know, I go straight into Baltimore mode. I'm like, yo, hold on. Can't you backdate that joint? Like, when did he say this? Like, backdate it. He's like, man, it's in a system. We can't backdate it. Like, it's, it's not happening. So you got, I just dropped off my, our son at my mom's house. To, and told mom, I said, mom, watch, watch Christopher. We're going to be right back. And when we be back, we're going to have $286,000 in the bank account to launch this company. So that's the story of how this thing began, man. And that was a long ride home, bro. I can tell you, like, we, we, it was quiet as hell on that, <laughs> on that hour and 15 minute ride back. And um, we kind of just looked at each other and said, okay, well, do we believe in the idea? Do we believe in our concept? then this is going to be, this is going to happen 
often. Like people aren't going to feel it. Something's going to hit a roadblock. This can't be one, one and done. Where's the resiliency? Do we really believe in this? Do we, if we really believe in this, if you really believe in your vision, if you really believe in launching your school, if you really believe in developing what you think you can do for other people to impact their lives through what you can bring to them, you got to do it against all the odds. I don't care what the odds are. If you really believe in it, you got to push for it. And so that's kind of how we had to start talking to ourselves. The problem was 2008 was right around the corner. Within two months, the president's on TV talking about we're in a recession. So now you got a startup that's launching in the beginning of a recession and everybody is you know, locking up their money and everybody is losing money and losing jobs. So that's when we had to dip into the 401k. That's when we lost, had to use all of that. That's when the credit card debt went super high. That's when you saw the bank account picture being broke. That's when you see me grabbing loose change. My mother-in-law is buying our groceries. That's when I'm sitting in the parking lot actually crying. I'm not afraid to tell another, another brother that I was sitting in the parking lot crying because I was frustrated as hell because I knew I had skill. I knew I had talent. I knew I had ambition and I knew I had a dream, but yet and still we were flat broke. And it was really causing a lot of stress because I had told my wife, who's not a risk taker like I am to come along on this journey. So what did that mean for me as a man to not be able to have her, not be able to take care of her or have her, have her like supported. So I was going through a lot of emotions. Plus you got to remember, I was also watching my dad pursue his dream when I was younger. And I remember him, we didn't call people back then entrepreneurs. I didn't really know what to call them. I just knew that he was like a manager of music groups and he was trying to create a Motown in Baltimore and he had two music groups and these music groups would go to the studio. So I would hang out with him on Saturday mornings and go see what they were doing. But I would never forget seeing that pink slip on the apartment door one day. So we had this two bedroom apartment. I shared a bedroom with my younger brother and the pink slip was an eviction notice. So I was old enough to, to read and I was like, dad was, you know, What's that? And so he kind of sat me down and broke it down as to what was going on. But, but then and still, on the same weekend that we get in that bad news, Sunday morning, he's putting me into the car, me and my, my um, brother, uh, Sean, into the car, and we're driving around other neighborhoods outside of the neighborhood that we're in because he's looking at houses that he's willing to buy. Like, he wants to buy. He can't buy it. We're looking at an eviction notice in front of us. But his mindset was still like, yo, that's temporary. This is where we're going. So I'm watching my father, right? And, and, be, and getting impressionable cues from him on what it's like to be impeccable with your word, what it means to have integrity, that's all you got. And then what it means to pursue your, your dream against all the odds and how you build up resilience so that when you get knocked down, you know how to get back up. And so watching that man and then seeing my dad actually have to file bankruptcy. He went, he, he, they got far, but they didn't get far enough. And so he had to file for bankruptcy. So here I am, you know, now doing my thing and I'm sitting in a parking lot and I'm like, damn, am I going to have to file for bankruptcy? Am I going to have to, am I like re repeating this cycle? Like, how am I going to? And so that's where the emotion was really hitting. And so I wanted to paint that picture so that all of you that have gone through your own trials, your own stories, everybody's got a, everybody's got a story. And some stories are way harder than others to deal with. That was our lowest low. So I respect whatever low you've been through. All I can say is that they make you tougher if you decide to learn from it. And I mean, I learned from it so much, Chin. I actually took a, um, I, I should grab it down off the wall. I actually framed, I took a screenshot of the bank account. You saw the picture, but I framed the daggone thing because I wanted to see it in my face to remind me of, of how low we once were. So that I would, I would never lose humbleness and I would never forget that moment. And so where we are today, man, we got two companies, we got six employees and um, we have our show on YouTube, which is about to do a distribution deal. And we're working on that distribution partner right now. So I can't really mention too much about it, but keep your fingers crossed. You'll be seeing soon on that one. And then um, we have the course. And the course, the reason why we're really gun ho about the course is because I really want to see more black and brown founders and more black and brown entrepreneurs really be able to utilize this revenue stream that they don't really know exists or they haven't been able to tap into. And that's sponsorships, corporate brand sponsorships. So that's the thing that got us out of our hole. And now I've learned over the last nine years how to get big brands like Capital One, Zenny Eyewear, FedEx, AT&T, uh, Intel, Sony, Roku, who else? Um, um, uh, who else? I've been? Oh, Wix. I mean, I'm actually wearing a deal right now. You can see it on my set. Zenny Eyewear is right here. So this is what's called a product placement. So every single video I'm in, Zenny's getting a shout out. 
So if you don't know, by the way, you can get prescription eyewear to look fly like me starting at like $6.95, just saying. Go to zenny.com and check it out. So that's how you do it. But that's a that's a multi-year deal that I did with them that's that's um worth worth close to 200 k So that's an 18-month deal worth worth close to 200 k And um, so it's these types of things that people don't know that are accessible to them that could actually help fund your ideas, fund your events, fund uh, your content that you want to create. And the money doesn't have to be paid back. That's the beautiful thing about getting brand sponsorship money. You have to do some things to try to please the brand. And we could talk about that. But the idea is you don't have to pay a loan. It's not a loan. It's not interest. You're not giving up equity in your business. You don't have to pay family and friends back. Nobody's hounding you. It's, uh, it's a different way of thinking of securing the bag. So while you're, while you're you know, charging individuals and charging consumers and doing the B2C, continue to do that. But now you have a new revenue stream for you to go B, B to B, where you could actually get revenue from brands that want to connect with you to connect to your audience. They want to connect with you to connect to your audience. So that's what we're teaching people now. So the, the website is GetSponsorshipMoney.com, GetSponsorshipMoney.com. And um, for those of you that aren't ready to dive right in, you should attend my masterclass tomorrow night. I'll be doing a masterclass tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And that is, you can go to uh, getsponsorshipmoney.com slash masterclass. Getsponsorshipmoney.com slash masterclass. I'm putting that in the chat box. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <clears throat> So that way, if they want to come to the masterclass, you'll be able to sit, you'll be able to actually see some things and really get more educated. Because Chin, here's the bottom line, man. Since COVID hit, the, the revenue opportunity is outlandish. Like it's ridiculous. And there's only a few of us that, that look like me that understand what's actually going on in the trenches with this stuff. So here, the problem was in, in COVID, all the brands stopped spending money on advertising. There was nothing, there was nothing to sell because nobody knew what was going on. So they locked up the budgets. Well, now that everything is starting to show that everything is starting to slowly open up and e-commerce did very well, but it, it, since things are opening up, the budgets are opening up. And so you got people that are at advertising agencies that are, over, that are in charge of millions, if not billions of dollars in advertising money that are saying they've never seen this amount of money about to be unleashed since the post-war era because it's been compressed. So these companies, these corporations have budgets and fiscal cycles. They have to deplete a certain amount of money by that end of that budget cycle if they are going to get replenished for the new cycle. So all this leftover money due to COVID is now getting ready to be spent. So events, um, content, uh, I mean, man, email newsletters are being sponsored, group text messages are being sponsored, product placement, product integrations, retail, stores, uh, virtual events. Um, there's so many things, man, that are being, uh, book tours are being, so many things are being sponsored right now. So it really, if you don't think you're sponsorable because maybe you got low following or a small community, you got to get past that mindset because what they want is an engaged community. So somebody like Chin who has an engaged community that's all about finance, business, making moves, marketing, he could be setting himself up to be maybe getting sponsorships from places like Square or American Express. The way you think about sponsorship, and then I'll take a pause. I just want to get this message out, man. I get excited. But the way you think about sponsorship, for those of you that may be thinking, I don't know if this is for me, the way that you find out if it is, is you answer your, ask yourself this question. What do my uh, customers, members, viewers, readers, listeners, if you have a podcast, what do my people need in order to execute on the advice or the information or the thing that I'm sharing for them to do. So if you're launching things and you, you know that you're launching schools or that you are building something for other people and they, what tools, what devices, what equipment, what software, what uh, services, though, what do they need in order to excel at doing what they do? Then those brands are your first set of targets in terms of your prospects of who could be potential sponsors because those brands want to make sure they get to your audience, especially if your audience uses or needs to use those types of products and services. 
So hopefully that makes things a little clear for you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so we have a lot of beauty professionals on tonight, barbers, stylists, nail tech, school owners. So could you hit on, plant some seeds in their head on some things that they should do? And your program, it breaks everything down step by step by step. Go ahead, tell them some of the things um, about that because beauty professionals are artists. So mm -hmm. they need things, the recipe. So tell them about how that program breaks everything out in bite-sized chunks. Yeah, so for you know people that are in the beauty industry, first and foremost, it's a big industry. As you all know, you wouldn't be in it if it wasn't. But from an advertising perspective, um, beauty, fitness, health and wellness, all of that stuff is a very big category in terms of advertising budgets. So for those of you that may be thinking, if any of you, I'll start here. This is the easy, low-hanging fruit. If any of you do any types of events, I don't care if they're at the venue or if you do them somewhere else, if any of you plan any types of events, those things should be sponsored. You should not just be selling ticket sales to fund that event. You can still do that, but you should also make sure that you're getting the revenue possibilities from brands who also want to get access to that audience. And that's going to bring a much higher revenue stream. So I got like a stylist right now who's also in the course. And she was like, you know, Mario, I don't really know if this is really right for me, but here's what I'm trying to do. And what she does is she actually styles it, uh, people in corporate. So she's looking to do makeovers for people that want to level up their, their, their dressing game, both at the office, but also outside of the office. And she does something that she calls sipping shops. And these sipping shops are when people actually come to her venue or to a venue that she's, ha that she's uh, using as a, as a place to house where you can get a little bit of drink, but you would also see some of the clothing that she's offering and also see some of the accessories and how she can put some things together. And I asked her, I said, well, are you getting these things sponsored? And she said, no, the reason why I do the sipping shops is because that becomes a lead from my funnel. If people come to my sipping shops, I can get them as potential clients to become you know, people that, I, that are now my customers. I said, well, don't stop doing that. I said, but the fact that you've got people even showing up to a physical venue and you don't have any other brands that are there that could have a complementary products or services, not competing, but complementary products or services means you're missing out on revenue. You already booking the place. You already telling people where to come to. People are already showing up, but you're thinking only about how you're going to get that customer to become a part of your sales funnel or how you're going to sell them a particular item or an accessory or a product when you could be doing all of that and still be charging $25,000 to a brand that also wants to get access to that audience. And that's on the low end. So that's just one simple idea based around maybe uh, um, um, styling and, and, and barbers and, and beauticians. If any of you are doing anything that's event related, that's one. The second thing would be if any of you are not making content, this is the time to make content. What I mean by that is you should be documenting what you do. I don't care if you got to get your son, your niece, your nephew with their iPhone and point it at what, what auntie is doing <laughs> and shoot some video of the before, the after, the process. People believe when they see it. And so shooting video creates a couple of things. Number one, social proof. But number two, it creates an opportunity that if that video, if you do that consistently and uh, you're starting to get views on those videos, that becomes sponsorable because now your view, your videos can be brought to you by, you know, XYZ company. And then the brand, the logo pops up and then it goes into your video. So that's just another way that you could be making some content that would serve as marketing for you, but also be able to identify uh, that you have social proof and that you are really having an impact and that you do these things. So those are just two quick examples, but we go into so many and the way the course is really broken out is that within four weeks, you will be pitch ready. And so my job is to get you buttoned up and tight so that you know exactly what you're gonna be pitching and how you're going to pitch it. Because the biggest challenge is knowing who the companies are that you want to approach. So we help you identify those companies. Then who the people that you need to contact at those companies. I teach you how to get their email addresses. And then what do you say to them to get their attention? So one quick tip, and this is good for any of y'all that are trying to ask anything of anybody, 
a partner, a reseller, uh, a manufacturer, somebody that you're trying to get access to, always ask for a meeting that's got an off balance minute. What I mean by that is don't ask for, let me get five minutes of your time. Don't ask for, let me get 30 minutes or 60. Ask for 12 minutes. Ask for 11 minutes. Ask for 13, not five, not 10, not 15, not those things that, that end on the, in, in between. Ask for 11 minutes, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. And the reason why is because when you do that, the person that you're asking of their time actually pays attention to the request because they're so used to people saying, let me just get five or 10 minutes and it goes on for a half hour because it's been watered down. So if you really wanna get somebody's attention, say, I just need 11 minutes of your time. Can you give me 11 minutes? You'll get a response like that, number one. And number two, what I've seen and what my students mostly see is what happens to me. This is only because I'm using this in real life for the past several years. Most of the time people will be like, no, 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 that's okay. We don't have to do 11 minutes. We can give you more than that. How about 20 or 30 minutes? Well, damn, now I get my 20 or 30 and I, I didn't even ask for it. Now, some won't do that. Some will be like, okay, this is unique. This is different. You caught my attention. I'll give you 12 minutes. And then you hold to those 12 minutes. But what you say, what you ask, and the questions that you ask in those 12 minutes is the discovery where you're trying to find out how you can solve a problem for somebody. And when you find those, that information out, then you can turn that into a proposal that you can bring back to them that solves a problem for them, but also facilitates a need for you. So some of y'all wants to get some other revenue in your business so that you could buy more equipment, so that you could do marketing, so that you could hire more staff, and you're trying to think how you can build that. And yes, some of that's gonna be upselling your current customers, getting them to buy more, cross-selling other products to your existing customers. So they don't just buy one thing, they buy two or three things. And then also getting new customers, not just retaining the ones you have. But then the other bag is that you could be getting brand sponsorship dollars as another revenue stream that could also get uh, funneled into your business. It's a lot of good information. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I go hard like that in the paint. I, I apologize if I went too deep too quick. No, um, you're giving us a lot of information because you're, you're sharing something that really very few beauty professionals know about. Hardly any of them. I, I don't know any of them that know about what you're sharing. I don't even think they were even aware that this existed or they could do that. Um, give us do, do, Chin, do, Chin, question. Do most of your people have physical shops? Are these physical locations? Most of them have physical locations, whether wow. it's a salon suite, a school, or a shop, you know, a salon or barbershop. And see, so when you have a physical presence, you also have a venue at all times. So some of y'all do your happy hours or some of y'all, you know, do your do some events maybe at your place, but that's an opportunity for brands. There's, there's um, something to say about incorporating a brand that could be getting visu visible exposure at your locations. Look, it's your location. You want your brand to be paramount. You want people to remember your shop, your name, your thing, your school. But at the same time, you could be facilitating an opportunity for your customers to experience another brand through product demonstrations, through uh, signups, through um, tastings, all types of things that you can control at your shop and at your school that could open up a new revenue stream for you. Even if it's just 5K, it'd be a new 5K that you didn't have to worry about getting before. So it doesn't have to be you know, six figures or large five figures, you might just want to do something every month that just brings you another five or 10K every single month. And how do they pay? Do they wire the money to your account? They give it to you at once, they break it down. How do they pay? Yeah, they pay. Um, so how you would charge is you want half up front. So you get half up front and then the other half after you fulfill what it is you told the brand you would offer to them. And so normally that other half can either be paid right after it, but most cases with corporate, it's usually like a net 30 situation. So that's why you ask for the half up front so that if you need any money to actually pull the thing off, you can get some of the upfront <laughs> money, but then you get a net 30. Once the thing is finished, you'll get the other half. Some brands will give you the whole thing if it's small enough. Some brands will just give you a $5,000 check if they believe you and if they, if they work with you. Some will just do the 50-50. The but um, they will wire it to your account. 
uh, that's all done or they, you know, very rarely do they send a check, but sometimes that's how it will come to. Now, when you were at your wits end and that breakthrough came. Yeah. <laughs> tell us about that. Walk us through that. Oh man. Um, <laughs> bruh, that, I mean, y'all know what it feels like. That, that right there. See that, because what happens is your foundation starts to get questioned. You start questioning yourself, the mindset, the negativity that starts to kick in, the disbelief that starts to happen, the imposter syndrome, all these things that make you feel like you're not strong enough. Or you might even start questioning your faith, like, God, why me? Why, what's going on? And so all of these things start registering. And when it starts that negative spiral downhill, man, it gets really, really tough to get out of. And so many of us have different ways that we've been able to try to fight that or deal with that. And the formula that I've kind of created to help me get through that, man, is really coming back to one simple question. When I ask this question, you know what I want to do? I want to do a test with your audience. I want y'all to put it in the chat. Let's see. I want y'all to put this answer to this question in the chat so we can see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Clayton said he is speaking life. What up, Clayton? I see you. Victoria said that's exactly what I need to learn. Well, I'm here to help you with that. All right, so here's the question. Who loses if you don't show up? Put that in the chat for me. Who loses if you don't show up? I'm gonna sit back and watch. Oh, I like this. Chin is already on a millionaire barber. He, boy, he got the integration down. He knows how, he's got the interactivity down. He knows how to drop the question in there and everything. All right, Tracy says me, Vivian, I do. Maggie, me, me and my family, right? From Millionaire Barber, you, lo you lose, says Sham, yep. Uh, me, your company, I do, me. Okay, I want y'all to see this, this is so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it keep rolling for a second. I wanna see how many people, my brand, me and my loved one, says Tony. Javonda says me. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. I got bad news. <laughs> I got bad news. All of that's wrong. All of that's wrong. All of that's wrong. Self-preservation will always kick in. Chin, will you or will you not always fight to take care of yourself and your family? Yes. With, unequivocally, without, without a thought. I think John got it right. John said, my client, the people that lose if you don't show up are not you, your spouse, your family. You're gonna fight for that regardless of what happens to you. But the people that really lose if you don't show up are your clients, your customers, the people that believe in you, the people that need your products, the people that need your services, the people that need to be touched by your energy, by your gift, by your talent, by you. Those are the people that if you can answer that, when you are down in the dumps and you feel like crap, and you're like, man, I feel like giving up. This is too hard. Why is it so hard? Who loses if you don't show up? If that can't get you back up, you're in the wrong business. Just do yourself a favor and go do something else. Because that's your center. That is your core. If you take care of others, you will automatically take care of yourself. The old African proverb already proved that for us. You can go fast alone but you can go farther together. So if you take care of others and you create value, if you create products that they care about, if you treat every customer right, even though it's hard as hell to do that, if you refund that person their money because you gotta be the bigger person and take that hit on the chin, do it. You gotta fight for your integrity, your reputation, your brand, and for the people that need to experience what you were put on this earth to deliver. That's who loses if you don't show up. So Shin, when I get hit with that question, or I get hit with a down moment. By the way, y'all, we don't have bad days. Please stop, watch your language. Please stop saying bad days. You had a bad moment that you might be letting become a bad day, but you had a bad moment. Maybe somebody, you know, cut you off on the road on the way to work. Maybe somebody in your family pissed you off or something. That was a bad moment. Compartmentalize that. Get back to who loses if you don't show up. Now, if you got a string of bad moments, then yeah, you got a bad day. But if you got a bad moment, don't make that moment into a bad day. So my point is, when you use that as a way to get back to center, it really helps to get back to focus. 
Some people call it your why. I think it's deeper than that. So that's what helps me to, to answer your question. That's what helps me get myself back up and, and fight for another day. It's not that we're not human. Go through your emotions. You owe that to yourself. That's fine. I'm not trying to say be a robot. You got to be an empathetic human being. You got to do what's right. But what I am saying is just take that pity party moment and then remind yourself who loses if I don't show up and then get back in the game. Now, when you drove back to your mom's house because she was supposed to babysit the kid. <laughs> Why are you going to go there on me like that? <laughs> you know, you're the first person to ask this question. That's insightful. Everybody else forgets that moment. You didn't forget that. And I saw how you write your write notes. I love your interviewing style. And, and, and it tells me a lot about your character too, but no one's asked me that question. You're the first. Speaks a lot to your ability to listen too, because that's a really big cue point right there. Because you're basically asking me, how did you face that? How did you deal with that? What was the outcome of that? Plus I'm back early. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> You said you were going to be back around 8, 8.30, not 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock. That was fast. It was like, I think it was like more like 7.30 back then because the meeting was at like 4. Um, yeah, great question. So um, whew, that was heavy, bro. I mean, I, I hmm. damn, man, you got me. You got me right back in that moment. You got me right back in that moment. Because, because, you know, you're looking at your mom, man. Your mom, if you had a mother, if you were lucky enough to have a parent that actually believed in you and you could see the grin on her face when her son was going off after being laid off and, and looking at like, this might be a rough cycle because he just got laid off from the job but he's been hustling on the side and now this hustle is actually turning into something that's actually real for him and for his new wife and for their three-year-old son. And then to know that that mother is the same mother that was married to the father that also had to file bankruptcy. She's seen that look before. For me to see her give me that look and try to be strong for me Parents are a trip, man. They're the strongest people on the planet. If they care about their, if they care about their children, because they, 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 they don't let you see them hurt. Just one time though, she, she tried her, she tried her hardest to not let it show, but it was, it was starting to show. And uh, so that was tough. That was tough. I hugged her. I remember her praying, and I remember her, you know trying to be strong, but I also remember how, it, how weak she was in the knees by the blow, because I think she saw how much I was hit and, and how much I was confused and that I, I really didn't understand what my next step was gonna be. Yeah. Now, the people, you told people, well, people knew that you was going to that party to sign that contract, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> a handful, not a lot. Well, you know, yeah, a handful. Enough, <laughs> enough. Damn you, Chen, why are you doing this? <laughs> I'm just nosy. <laughs> you're just gonna meet somebody on Instagram, invite them on your show, and then you're just gonna start hitting them in the gut. <laughs> but <Ba -ba! laughs> we ain't playing over here. Uh, I love it, man. It's beautiful that you're asking these questions. Yeah, man, um, that's the other thing that we are addicted to in our society. Some of us are better at this, at not being addicted to it than others. And that is called acceptance. Some of us are addicted to acceptance. Some of us won't make the moves that we know we need to make because we're still trying to make other people happy. And some of us have dream killers that are living right in our homes, but they don't even know that they're actually dream killing on us. That's different from haters. Haters know what they're doing. That's negative energy. They know they don't, they don't wanna see you succeed. So they try to tell you everything to help you not see it because they can't see it for themselves. They're projecting their fears and their stuff on you. But dream killers are people that actually can live in your home that may not understand fully what your dream is. And therefore they can't fully seem to support it. And maybe they even say things that are hurtful but they don't mean it intentionally. They're just confused and maybe even scared 
because they don't understand how you're gonna pull it off or, or pull it together. So these are dream killers. These are your stockholders. Every last one of y'all are, are, is a corporation. You have stockholders. If you have family members that answer to you, if you have family members that you have to answer to, you have stockholders. And so helping them understand your vision is, makes it critical to make sure that the home structure is strong. Because if the home structure is strong, you can go a lot further. And so I think, you know, when I think about all the people that thought, all the people I told, this is what I was gonna go do. And now I had to come back and tell them it didn't happen. And then, to see, you know, to have my mom see and to be there for that support, I was like, oh, okay. Some people fight, and I do too, some people fight to prove the haters wrong. Because sometimes that can f fire you up. Oh, you don't believe in me? Oh, you're not going to give me that loan? Oh, you're not going to help me? I'm going to show you. I get that. But truthfully, it's negative energy that we're trying to use to pump us up to maybe turn that into positive energy. And that's okay for an ignition. It's not okay to be riding on that gas like that for miles at a time because that's negative energy that's now seeping into what you're trying to do as something that's positive. Let it ignite you, but then move on from that. So, that, so I started thinking, I don't need to prove my haters wrong. What I need to do is prove my supporters right. So how do I prove my mom right? She knows I'm capable. I know I'm capable. How do I prove her right? My friends that were like, man, don't worry about it. You're gonna have another shot. Get back up. How do I prove them right? So that they can be like, I knew it. I knew he was gonna be able to do it. I knew she was gonna be able to do it. So I think that's really how I was able to deal with that, man. Really identifying that you gotta clean out the trash. And that means you gotta get your energy right. And that means you can't be, you know, bringing in drama and negative energy into spaces. And we got a lot of people that think they're not negative, but they actually move negatively. And so we got to actually get to the realest part of ourselves to be like, why am I acting this way? And normally when we really dig deep, we kind of find out it's maybe something that stems from our childhood. Maybe it's some kind of insecurity. Maybe our ego and our pride is in the way. Um, and so there's all these other things that, you know, as humans, we need to try to work on to make our best selves be our best self. Because when we can work on being our best selves, then we have best businesses. Then we have best uh, communities. Then we have best legacies. And so I think, man, just really working on that really helped me be strong to try to get back up and fight for the people that supported me and believed in me. Now, was it her mama buying the groceries or your mama? Her mother. Her mother. Well, now, how crazy is that, bro? The mother-in-law, bro. Like the mother-in-law's buying my groceries? Like, You know, some of y'all like, damn, I can't, ain't no way in the world my mother going to buy my groceries. <laughs> so some of y'all already know, like, you know, but that was a mother-in-law that really believed in her son-in-law and her daughter. She didn't make a mistake. This is just a temporary hiccup. So again, who am I fighting for? I know who loses if I don't show up, the people I need to touch. But who else am I fighting for? The people that support me to prove them right. Did you want to hide from anybody when that had happened? Like not go out in public or hide or go certain places? For about maybe three days. For about maybe three days, I laid low. I didn't understand how to deal with it. And I didn't understand how I was going to answer the question beyond what happened. And every time I knew I was gonna have to answer that question, I was gonna be revisiting that same pain. And what I needed to do was to try to figure out what the next move was. And so I sat still to try to get momentum. But yeah, and I guess to another degree, since I was addicted to acceptance, I was also ducking, not having to face it. If we're gonna you know, be straight up vulnerable and, and, and transparent. Now, did you promise your wife anything when y'all was going up there to get all this money? Like when you talked about stuff? Of Come on, man. Of course we talked about where we going to move to. We talked about, uh, we didn't get like too material because we knew that we wanted that money to actually fuel the business and really, like we were, we were smart to know that the minute we get any income coming in, we're putting it back into the business, not into material product. 
And so the, the first thing that we knew is if we want to scale our company, you've got to be able to either automate systems, automate things that are redundant, that constantly are asking of your time, or you need to hire people. It's one of those two things. If you want to scale, if you want to continue to juggle everything because you want to be in control of everything, then you're only going to get but so far. But if you really want to build a business and you're trying to build something that's beyond you, something that's going to be seriously sustainable, something that's going to be a, a seven figure business, then you have to be able to understand how to automate things that are consistent so that you have a system in place and that you're going to have to also look at how you're going to have to scale through <clears throat> people, through people, through human capital. So, um, yeah, man, we, we have really thought hard about how we want to build a business. We had picked out a building. <laughs> I mean, we did do some, we did do some window shopping, bro. <laughs> like we did some window shopping and, um, that was tough for her, man. My wife is from the Caribbean. I mean, she, 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 uh, She's from St. Thomas, from the VI, and um, um, is also part Puerto Rican, and is black, and so there was there was you know she's comes from a a a, a slower culture, and a, a different pace, and than I came from, and so and she's a Libra, so come on man she need balance, and you got me the Sagittarius half man half horse with a bow and arrow ready to set everything off just just ready to go. And it, it really it really challenged the relationship to try to figure out how we could really keep ourselves together in such a chaotic moment because we got no safety net. Because we both went into the business together, even though we had a year and a half's worth of savings, it didn't matter because of the of the uh, economic crash. Now, what was your brother saying about this? Um, great question, man. He was he was a believer. He. He, he's seen me, he's seen me take enough risks that I think he was just like, Mario will figure it out. He'll bounce back. He won't do the same types of risks. He, he's not that, he's not that personality. Um, but I don't think he had, it, it never occurred to me that he questioned whether or not I would make it or and not make it, make it, but like that I would climb out of the situation. It never occurred to me that he questioned it. Again, man, I feel like I just had this energy that could help me understand that I got to fight for the people that think I can still pull this off. Now, when you pulled it off and you went back to your mama, tell us about that. <laughs> man, oh man, I wish I could pull up a picture right quick and show, show mama holding the Emmy. I mean, I've never seen her have a bigger grin when she's at the Emmy Awards. You know, my mom and my dad were at the Emmy Awards, man. And you sitting there nervous because you, we were nominated for two Emmys and we sitting there throughout, it's a three and a half hour program. Y'all don't get to see all that, but the program is long as hell. They only televise certain pieces, program is super long. And you sitting there and um, you, you're on pins and needles when your category gets called. And uh, that night, or that day, earlier that day, I remember us, we shot some video, it's on our YouTube channel. You can go and check it out at Never Settle Network. If you go to Never Settle Network, you can go and see some of the behind the scenes the night of the uh, Emmy Awards. And, um, and uh, you know, all the beauticians in the building would love that. You know, we had the makeup, we had the, the stylist, we had all the beauticians in the building, like helping family look really special and good for the moment. Not knowing if we were gonna win, but we were showing up like we were, we didn't care. We were showing up like we were. And um, to see her really see us kind of get to that level after the years of kind of fighting for the dream and being consistent was just beautiful, man. And I think the only other moment that was really big is, um, you know, some of y'all didn't get a chance to, to, to see it, but we ended up, the studio that we had, I'm gonna pull the frame, I'm gonna pull the picture down so you can see it. The studio that we had before was a small studio that was kind of like a makeshift building, uh, 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 an office space. We basically borrowed uh, an office lobby of a company in order to shoot the first season of our show because we couldn't afford the money to, to, uh, to, to pay for a New York City studio. A New York City studio at minimum is costing $300,000 at minimum. I mean, you can get one for, 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 for 20 or 50,000 if you're shooting like a little one camera shoot. We were shooting like a full on talk show, 50 to 60 people in the studio audience. We had four cameras. We had a supervising producer, executive producer. We had like staff and team. Like this was a, a full on thing. We were trying to compete with like 
major talk shows without any major money. So I asked the tech company if we could use their lobby for, for, for uh, eight episodes. And they said, yes, six episodes and two rehearsals. And they said, yes. But from that moment, since we did it with that, with, with that backdrop, it wasn't perfect. Some of y'all don't want to launch your thing because you're waiting for it to be perfect. Hear what I just said. Some of y'all are waiting to launch your thing because you need it to be perfect. And I'm going to tell you this. While you're waiting, other people are launching their things that aren't so perfect, but they're getting it out there perfect enough and people are reacting to that. And so if we'd have kept on holding off until we had it perfect, what I'm about to show you would have never have happened. But the fact that we went with, all right, this is perfect enough, let's go. And even though it was the best we could get with what we had, we made it work. We then, at the end of that season, it was eight episodes. We didn't know what we were gonna do, first season. We didn't know what we were gonna do because the season was ended. It was done. We only told the, the brand that we were going to shoot eight episodes. FedEx office came, spent $138,000 to help fund the thing, and we shot the thing. That summer, we're talking amongst ourselves and the team, and we're like, what are we going to do about the show? How are we going to bring it back? We don't have a studio to go to. The, 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 the tech company isn't saying, come back. You can do it another eight times. They were like, okay, you did it. That was cool. We helped you out. All right, peace. We get a phone call from Times Square. New York City, in the middle of Manhattan, the epicenter of the world, depending if you're a New Yorker or not, it's the epicenter of the world. <laughs> and at right next door to Good Morning America is a studio and it's run by NASDAQ. Now y'all know Wall Street, Wall Street's downtown. New York Stock Exchange is downtown. NASDAQ is Midtown. Ma NASDAQ Stock Exchange is uh, in Manhattan. I mean, uh, they're both in Manhattan, but Midtown, in Times Square. We get a call from them. They got wind of our show. And they said, we like what you're doing. We want to have a show here at our studio to talk to entrepreneurs like your show. Because we, we help entrepreneurs fulfill their dreams because we help them go public. So we're the, we're the place that turns your idea into an IPO. So I was like, is this really happening? So you go from wood floors and wood beams and, and tin metal chairs for our first season to something that ends up looking like that. That huge projection wall, it's like 80 feet high, full of screens. Audience is in, in studio with us. We got six cameras, seven cameras. And it's on a whole other level. Now I'm in Times Square. Now I'm being put on billboards. Now I'm being advertised in a big way. But we would have never have gotten there had we not sh took our shot with what little we had. And so I hope that serves as some, for some of y'all some major inspiration to not over perfect and not wait and procrastinate because you're hanging on to perfection. You know, we will work on ourselves and we know that we as humans aren't perfect and we will know that we need to work on ourselves but when we put out a product or a business or a website or a school or an offering we feel like that thing's got to be perfect it doesn't you just need to be able to evolve and to grow it but ain't nobody going to know about it if you wait too long to start it so how did it feel when all of that happened like a damn dream come true. That's when you start asking yourself, am I worthy of this? Like you go from the complete, God, what happened? How come we ain't get this deal to, oh my gosh, am I really worthy of this? Thank you, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Complete opposite extremes. And that's why it's important for us to try to really, as best as we can, enjoy, enjoy the struggle of the journey because Man, I'm glad that I started to slow down a little bit and, and, and feel the moments of the ride so that I could be super appreciative of it and not just be like, all right, what's next? All right, what's next? Even though I'm ambitious. So yeah, what's next? But not to the point of, okay, we did that, what's next? No, 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 we're gonna sit here, we're gonna marinate on this for a minute. My, I'm up on, I'm, a, I'm in Times Square up on a billboard that cost millions of dollars for people to get on. And because I finessed a deal with this company, I'm able to get on this billboard. And that's not usual behavior. 
<laughs> so, so I wanted to make sure I understood what was actually happening and what was going on. Um, so yeah, man, it felt, it didn't feel like, uh, it didn't feel like you arrived. It felt more like, yeah, this is what it's been about and we're still on our way. That's kind of how it felt like this really kind of surreal, you don't really believe it, but then you see it, but then you're like, okay, I'm actually walking into this building once a week for these 10 weeks and I'm actually shooting my show in the same building that the CNBC network shoots their morning show in. The same studio that the show Squawk Box, the morning ticker show, finance show shoots with all their execs and, 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 and mostly male Caucasian people, no offense, but I'm just saying that's normally what that looks like. And here you got this dude with a dream from Baltimore that's uh, been around violence, that's seen it, that's been, that's been shot at, that's had friends that have died from, from, from situations. We all know, we all been through stuff. And uh, here I am in, in, in NASDAQ shooting a show. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> how did the course come about with the funnel and the copy? Because there's some killer copy on that funnel. <laughs> oh, yeah, on that page, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Can I, can I share a screen for a second? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Let me, let me show y'all something. Um, let me do that real quick. Because what you bring up is such a, a, a beautiful point here. Let me see. So, oh, so you know what? Let me show you the, the landing page is what you're talking about. Yeah, because see, so here's proof, right? There's my boy, Damon mm -hmm. John. Um, so yeah, on our, on our landing page, let me scroll to the top here. The reason why um, this landing page is really, man, the reason why I wanted to do this is because like I mentioned, especially for our people, some of y'all don't need to take the course and I will let you know if you don't need to take it. So if you have actual questions about whether or not this is right for me, I'm gonna want you to send me an email or DM me on Instagram, send me a DM or, or message me on Facebook, Mario Armstrong. I will answer your questions and I will find out if this is really right for you. Some of you already know you do events, you would like to get in front of brands, you wanna know how to do that and you know you should be in this. But th this landing page, man, we took seven months to make this course. We hired an instructional designer to help us create this curriculum. And some of the brands that I have worked with, by the way, this is the lobby of the NASDAQ studio. So in the lobby, what we would do is we would have, the show was an hour, but we had the audience come an hour before the show starts. So we had a reception. And so all of these brands would have, a, they had a table, they had a setup. And so our audience would come in, we'd have music playing and uh, they would network, meet the brands, and then we would funnel them into the studio for the next hour to actually sit through the taping of the show. Um, but I did deals with uh, sponsorships with, with Dr. Dre and Beats by Dre. Um, and, you know, this course, you know, is really for so many people that are looking to, let me show you some of the things that you'll learn. You'll learn how to land the deal You'll learn how to craft that perfect pitch, uh, identify who you're supposed to pitch, finding the right companies. And these are all the different things that can be sponsored. So you may wanna just take a look at that page to see if there's something that you've been thinking about or something that you wanna do. These are the obvious things. There are other things that aren't on this list that can also be sponsored, but these are some of the obvious things that we can help, that we've had proven help in getting people sponsored. So yeah, man, we put a lot of effort there's AT and T. Uh, we put a we got a whole workbook, and we give you digital files. Like we give you the emails, so all you got to do is copy and paste the email of what you're supposed to say. We have um, a, a a worksheet, a, an Excel spreadsheet for you to plug in the figures and the numbers so that you get the right pricing uh, punched out of that. Because the biggest problem that a lot of people do in their sponsorships that they do wrong is that they do three tier pricing. And if any of y'all have ever seen a package or done a package, you know, the, 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 the gold, silver, bronze, or the platinum, silver, this, like they price their pitches in these three different levels. That's an outdated way of pitching. So we teach you the new way to pitch and the new way that brands look to receive pitches. 
and we give you a whole bunch of files and different resources to make sure that you got what you need to get it done. But the curriculum is six modules. You get it done in four weeks. Uh, if you can, it's on demand, so you could get it done in a weekend if you wanted to go that fast. There's me working with Target. This is me working with Capital One. Uh, that's what the studio set looks like. Uh, that's me on the Today Show. This was an event where I pitched Capital One that they were going to do with um, for the show and that we did. And then I had special guests like uh, Spike Lee be, came on to the show. Yeah, y'all seen the bank account when we were when we were broke, but what got us back on our feet was sponsorships and, and people like FedEx Office and them really pulled it off. And what's really different about this program really quickly too, and then I'll wrap up on it, is that I'm offering two times a week for four weeks, I will meet with you in live video group calls just like this, answering your questions for an hour and a half, two times a week. And you get access to those replays if you can't make it, but you can submit your questions and I'll answer them. So not only are you getting the course and the materials and the files and the worksheets and all that stuff that goes with it to, to help you, you're also gonna get direct access to me twice a week for four weeks. Most coaching programs do like maybe an hour a week or something like that. And I know a lot of people may have been taking courses before and have had mixed results. I'm not playing that. I gotta get you to have results. So that's why we also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if in those four weeks, you don't feel like you're gonna be successful, you want that money back, no questions asked. I'm not, we're not playing games. We stand behind what we've done. We stand behind what we built, but we also understand that if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. So there's no pressure there. So that's how we got to it, man. Uh, 997 bucks, which is ridiculous. I'm never offering this program at this low price again, just so y'all know. And the course closes enrollment on Friday. But the reason why I wanted to make it under a thousand this time is because I want to get the word out to as many people to give them a shot as possible. The next one will probably be more like 11 or 1300. We're still figuring that out. But that's important for y'all to see. And then one other thing for y'all to just see uh, that I mentioned is that when you're inside the course, this is what the, the, the course actually looks like on, on the inside. So you actually get access to uh, the, the entire workbook is right here for the entire course. Everything that I just talked about that you need, all the, all the activities is all in here. And you're gonna be doing things step by step to get you where you need to get to. All the lessons are in here. They're easy, they're in video form. And then below the video is everything that you need for the workbook and the activities. These are just some of the files real quick that you get like the pitch tracking sheet. This is what the copy of the emails look like that you're gonna be able to send to people. Um, the Excel spreadsheet that teaches you exactly how you fill out all your expenses. By the way, when we do our deals, we come out with a 40%, we try to shoot for a 40% net profit, 40% profit margin. Some people do 20, that's cool too. Some people do 10, we try to shoot for 40%. So that means if something is, you know, if I'm doing a deal that's $30,000, 40% of that is 12 grand that I'm taking home, which means it's probably costing me somewhere around 20 to maybe 28,000 to pull off the thing that I'm pulling off. But oftentimes, if I'm selling a $30,000 package, it's probably costing me more closely to like 15 to 20K, which means I'm taking home maybe 18, you know, thousand dollars, not 12. But here's what's really crazy, uh, Chin, about um, brand sponsorships and what you actually get out of this course is that many of our businesses need marketing money in order to get new recruitment, to get new uh, get our products sold, to get our seats in our classes, to get things filled. What many people don't know is that when you get money from a brand, the brand does not care how you allocate their money. What they care about are the results. So what I also teach you, because we do this, is we take some money from the brand. So if it's a $30,000 deal, and let's say the event, let's say I'm doing an event, and the event's going to cost me $20,000 to pull off. Now I know I got 10K profit coming in, but that's just one sponsor. I'm gonna sell two or three other sponsors, but my, my costs are already covered. So now everything else is coming in, it's pretty much profit. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of that money from the brand and I'm gonna actually go and buy ads with their money to help promote the very thing that they want me to execute. Like that's how crazy it is. And they know, and this isn't lying or anything. This is, this is understood behavior 
in the advertising and sponsorship world. That if I'm asking you for $35,000 and I'm telling you I'm gonna have 300 people or 100 people show up at this event, and I'm telling you that I'm gonna get X amount of views on my videos or X amount of impressions, or that I'm gonna set up a table so that you could have a product demonstration station. And I'm gonna give you maybe the email addresses to all the people that have registered because you want access to that audience too. And I give you all of that. You don't care how I accomplish it. You just know those are the goals that I'm supposed to hit and I'm supposed to, to reach. So if it only costs me 25,000 to get to that, but I've made 50, but I've charged 50, then I can use that other 25K how I want to. I can put it back into my business or I can take a, like another three or 5K and put that into ads. So often what we will do is we will make sure that we price things knowing that we're gonna need to take some of that money to put it into advertising to promote the very thing that they want us to achieve. So it's a little bit of a cheat code, but when you're inside the business and you understand this space, you understand that that's a real viable option for many of you. And what's that link? Um... The domain name for the course, so I can put it in the chat box. Oh, the domain is uh, getsponsorshipmoney.com. Getsponsorshipmoney.com. And like I said, if, if some of you, look, and I'll do this for your, for your audience too, man. If any of you really feel like this sounds like this is, so I'm gonna talk to two different people. Those of you that really feel like this is something for you. You feel like you may have heard enough and you feel like this is something for you. If you actually buy and tell me that you came in through Chin, what I wanna do for you is I wanna make sure that you get a half hour one-on-one -on -one call with me. And you can use that when you want. I've done this for one other group and it's really worked out well because that gives them a chance to meet with me and discuss their very specific thing. And I get a sense and an understanding of what it is you're trying to accomplish. And I can help you right there in that 30 minute call to start to accelerate so that you can actually uh, start moving quick. If you're the person that's like, I don't need to hear anything more. I believe this guy, he seems trustworthy. If that's you and you're ready to buy and you buy tonight and you tell me that you came in through Chin, then, um, and then I'll verify with Chin that you are part of the Chin's group, um, then I will give you a, a, a 30 minute session by yourself. Now, if you're, if you're the audience that you're on the fence and this isn't any pressure situation, if you're the audience that's on the fence, please reach out to me and ask me, Am I sponsorable, Mario? And then I'm gonna ask you a few questions. And then based off of your answers, I'm gonna tell you, uh, maybe not right now, maybe later. Or maybe once you actually get that event ready, then come back to me. If that event's next year, don't, talk, don't need to talk to me right now. If that event is this year, yeah, we might, we need to talk about it. So no pressure, but I just wanted to offer that up. And if anybody sees any value in that, just let me know. Uh, that's a lot of value in that. Cause I'm gonna join and learn. And Chin, for the for, what can I do for you, man? Because you know it has to be reciprocated. I want people to kind of also see that yeah. you saw me in a comment. I reached out to you. You reached out to me in the DM, and we started talking. And you moved like you did your research. You did what you did to validate and make sure everything was vetted. And next thing you know, I'm on your I'm on your group call with uh, so many people that are trying to build their dreams. Think about it if you don't have an answer for well, me right you, now, but let me know. You've already done enough for me by coming on here, educating, inspiring, enlightening, entertaining, giving hope. See, mm. all we need is hope. And a lot of times we don't believe. And you talked about that. Yeah. About believing and telling your story, how your wife, the bank account was negative 77 and how your mom was rooting for you and she was hurt and then you got disappointed and we've all had disappointment. Right. You've been on the brink of breaking or broke. And by right. you sharing that, you just don't know what that's done for us. I mean, hell, I'm a man and you had me, my eyes all watered up. <laughs> just telling that story because I could feel your pain because yeah, I've been there. Now, right. it was different. It was in a whole different era of me going to prison, whatever, but all of us have been there. And if we hadn't, like grandmama said, keep on living. And anytime you're shooting for something big, you're going to have baby disappointment, but you have that's faith, right, you know, faith the size of the mustard seed can move mountains. And that's right. You bro, know, bro. You, you, 
you were like Joshua and Caleb, operating in the eyes of faith, you know, and not fear. So you've already done enough. Money, you've done what money can't even do. Mm. See, you're giving us hope. And when somebody got hope and they believe in themselves, yeah, no. Yeah. It, it, if Mario could do it, if God worked for him, yeah, he'll right. work for me. The dog is out right. just before daylight. So that's right. You've already done it. I mean, I I'm appreciate good. that, bro. You know, I don't. <laughs> I'm looking in the chat too to just make sure I didn't miss. Oh, Victoria, uh, how many sponsors can you guarantee? Great question. How many sponsors can you guarantee during your program? I can't guarantee. I can't. I, I the mar It's just like the market. But, yeah, you can. What you can guarantee. Yeah. If they don't jump. Like Steve Harvey says, if you don't <laughs> jump, if you don't swing that bat, if you don't take a shot, that's right. What will be guaranteed, you would never hit the ball. You will never hit that shot. If you don't open that school, like when people ask, can that's you right. I'm gonna open the school and get government money dollars? I can't guarantee it, but I guarantee if you don't do it, you're gonna stay behind that, you're gonna die behind that chair, bro. So you guarantee they're not gonna get no sponsorship. <laughs> that's facts no and the thing is what you're doing right is the same thing i'm doing you're teaching formulas you're teaching processes you're you're bringing guests and others that can give advice to give you the blueprint as much as possible so what i'm teaching in the course is i'm teaching you the formula i'm teaching you the process i'm teaching you how to get the access some of y'all it would be a win just to get your just to get a response from a pitch that you some of y'all have done pitches before and got no responses and I get that you want to get the, the deal, but some of y'all need to even just recognize the fact that if I actually teach you the formula and you actually get a response, that's a win because you've never gotten that before. So understanding that this is a repeatable formula, sponsorship doesn't just happen. It is work, but it can happen with smart work and smart steps. And so for the right people that see this as an opportunity, they'll get the formula and the process that you repeat over and over. You don't just pitch one brand and then be like, okay, we tried. That's not how it works. Even at my level, I, I gotta still pitch multiple brands. I just did this with Cadillac. Cadillac don't, doesn't know me. They don't know me. So I had a strategy where I went into Instagram and the DM, I did some research, I teach you all of this whole thing. I gave you a whole case study, like how I broke it down and how I do it. So. It's doable, but it, but it requires consistency and you to reapply the formula. It's just no different than Kobe going to the gym to try to adjust his foul shot. Why did he shoot a thousand foul shots every day if he's one of the best players in the game? Because it was a repeatable formula and a repeatable process. Did it guarantee that he was gonna make the foul shot every time he shot it? No, but did it give his chances much higher that he was gonna get it? Absolutely. And I don't and think many beauty professionals we have an advantage, y'all, because these other beauty professionals out here, they don't know this. They're not on this private mastermind right now. So it gives you facts. an advantage. Also, that's facts right there. That's true. Which you all acquire this information from Mario. You don't just look, I'm not pitchable, but you know what? <laughs> Razor Chick is Atlanta hair doctor. I know some hairstylists that are more pitchable than me. Mm. So when I invest in this course, I'm going to pitch beauty professionals out there that I know. Mm -hmm. And then when I get them this contract, this deal, we're going to split the profits. There you go. See, so, and y'all know some people that are pitchable. So I'm not thinking about pitching myself. No, I'm not pitchable. <laughs> I don't know how to cut no head, do all that. I'm going to pitch some of these other high profile beauty professionals that are not on this call right now. Mm. That's powerful, Chin. Yeah. Uh, Sh Sh Shronda asks, uh, how long How long is the learning process? It's it's on demand. So you can do the course in about two weeks. You could get through all the lessons in like two weeks, depending on how much time you wanted to invest. Like I know some people that are hungry and are like setting aside a weekend to try to get through it all, but that's crazy. That's, that's a lot to take in that fast. The pace that we set it at was four weeks. In four weeks, you would finish the program and you would have everything that you need and when I say everything that you need, when you go through the program, I'm going to help you through the process, understand what you're going to be able to get sponsored. And then you're gonna have a focus point. Okay, now that we know what we're getting sponsored, who's gonna do the sponsoring? 
Now we get you to the list of getting the names of the companies. You got to do this work, but I'm going to help you do the steps. And then you're going to get the names of the people. And then you're going to start to try to approach the people. But the process of the learning is four weeks. The cycle for how long it may take for you to actually get a brand deal could be as short as two or three weeks. It could be three or four months. The cycle is all about what you're offering, when you're offering it, and at what time are you hitting the brand with this request? Sometimes you hit a brand right when they want to do something. Other times the brand's like, oh, this sounds great, but we're not going to have money for that until September. So then you're like, okay, can I come back and see you in August so we can seal this deal? So it all depends, but this is why frequency, you don't just pitch one brand. This is why in the course, we teach you how to get up to about 30 to 40 names so that you have enough people to actually pitch to, to increase your odds. Like Kobe increasing his, we want to increase your odds. Okay. Yeah, because you talked about partnerships. Yes. Key. Key. Yeah, I like many of y'all could need to collaborate more. Yeah. The I, pie is bigger than many maybe many of y'all, many of us think and what we're conditioned to think. How many of y'all are thinking about how your how your business can actually be global? Or are you only thinking about the zip code that you're in right now? How can you get your how can you get your business global? Shin, how can they get them? How can how many of y'all are developing product? They should be because they know about developing it, and I've given them contacts. They got to do the work. We we can't do your push-ups and eat your vegetables for you. <laughs> no, sure can't. But yeah, there are a lot of them because I've connected them, and a lot of them. Are Javonda me says, "I am." Yes, yep. that's what I want to hear. Yana says, "Us, great." They got that's online true. courses. They learning all of that. Brittany says, I am. See, that's, I mean, man, you got some doers in here, man. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Show y'all one other thing really quick. Maybe just think of it. Remember I told you there was a statement from uh, the Wall Street Journal about how the spending is taken off. The current rate of ad spending growth is likely to be the fastest in the post-war era. Now this comes from the ad giant uh, Group M from, from Brian. We are seeing advertising surges pretty much across the board as things get back to normal. So that means all categories, travel, healthcare, beauty, fitness, food, entertainment, but the biggest areas that's growing in digital spending is branded content and influencer marketing. Branded content is the content that you shoot on your phone, talking about your salon, talking about the makeover, talking about getting somebody ready, talking about new styles for the summer, talking about back to school fashion, talking about your school and, your, and the courses that you're teaching people. That's content. Are you documenting your work? Are you documenting your outcomes in a way that you can have video so that you can put that up on Instagram and then we can get you a logo to slap on it? Or by the way, are you using product in, in your salon? Have you ever called, uh, Chin, give me the name of a common product that, that you know your, uh, your folks use. Well, like a shampoo, conditioner, whatever? Yeah, perfect, perfect, give me a name. I mean, was there, they named them some? Who do, oh yeah, okay, so Clairol them? pops up. Yep, Clairol, um, yep, perfect. So how many of you have ever had a chance to call Clairol and say, we're about to launch an Instagram series where we're gonna be shooting video of some of the makeovers that we're doing or some of the designs or some of the things that we're doing for people and we're gonna make sure that Clairol's product gets seen in the video. Can we have a conversation about what that sponsorship would look, would look like and whether or not that would be a value to you? That's the conversation starter. And then what are the right questions to ask in that conversation? But that's the conversation starter. That's called product placement. That's called branded content. It's integrating a brand into content. So those are some, you know, right off the cuff. I'm not even thinking too deep. Like you see me, I'm trying to do this in real time. And the deal. Uh, somebody said, wow, this is good. Exactly. Y'all getting it now, right? 
<laughs> and how you slide in a DM. <laughs> yes, and how you slide in the DM. Oh my God, I'm glad I'm on this call tonight. Me too, me too. Karen, I see you, I see y'all. Now I got y'all thinking, now I got y'all thinking. I said this earlier and maybe, maybe it went over y'all heads or maybe it was too soon to maybe digest it. Really think about the products and the services that your people, your customers, your students, your mastermind members, your course takers, what are the products and the services that they need in order to maintain what it is you do for them, in order to accelerate what, what you're doing for them, in order to implement what you're telling them to go do? What are those products and services? Y'all already know. That is your short list of the people that you're gonna make your first set of calls to. Yeah, Redken, that's another one. Let me tell y'all something. This ain't nothing new. I, I, I know plenty of I know plenty of other folk that that make these phone calls. They call Redken. And I, I got, got an event. We got an event coming up. We'd love to have Redken sponsor it. We not not only would we love to have you all be a financial sponsor, we would love for you to also donate product. Pantene sponsored one of my friends as a hairstylist. For two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What? That's it. That's what I'm talking about. They must have seen something in her, and it, that was probably at least a year, a year, maybe a year deal. I don't know. Could have been something shorter. It was a year deal. That's a beautiful deal right there. Because what happens when you actually the other thing about it that we didn't discuss when she actually gets that type of opportunity to work with a brand, then what you have to do is use that as marketing for yourself because it elevates you. So the fact that she's got a deal with Pantene or someone gets one with Clara or Redkin and you start talking about your, uh, you know, we're now sponsored by Redkin or we're now sponsored by Clara, that elevates other brands are like, oh, wait a minute, she got sponsored by Clara? What is she doing over there? You use that as leverage. Oh, so I forgot a quick tip. So let me give y'all a quick little cheat code. Here's something you could try out. So for some of y'all, for some of y'all, what you should do is you should go to, some of y'all have products from maybe friends and family or somebody that you know that you support. Maybe, maybe they're not a major name like a Redkin or something like that, right? Like come down a few notches. And what I want you to do is when you shoot your video, I want you to use their product. Say to your friend, I'm gonna use your product in my video because I, I, I want, I'm gonna get you some free promotion. In exchange for the free promotion, I need a testimonial from you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that product, put it into the video, you're gonna do your thing, you're gonna show it to the camera, you're gonna do your thing, talk about it, keep talking about what the other content you're gonna talk about, make sure you mention the product, and then you're gonna put their logo on it and boom, it's done. What you're gonna do with that video though, is you're going to now use that as leverage to now go to a Pantene, a Clara, or a Redken. And you're gonna say, you know, we've been doing these videos and we've got them sponsored by, by this company. And we were thinking that you would be a great product that we should also feature in our videos. And it make sure it's non-competing, but you would be a great product that we would love to feature in our videos like this. The cheat code is they don't know that that brand didn't pay you. They think that that's a paid sponsorship. So now you are taking thing that you did for free to make it appear as if you got paid sponsorship. So now that you can actually get paid sponsorship. So there are different ways that we can move and make things happen that can accelerate the process. But I'm just trying to give y'all, I'm just trying to give y'all all the game. <laughs> and if you imagine you getting this much game, you can know what's going down in the course, but I'm giving y'all much game as much as I can to try to really help y'all. And because that's the mission. The mission is if this is right for you, you're gonna figure out how to make this work. Some of y'all don't need the course. Some of y'all got exactly what you needed tonight. You need to take down those notes and you need to get to executing tomorrow. Some of y'all don't even need me for that. And then some of y'all actually need a little bit deeper. You need some handholding, you need some guidance. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we got any more questions. You done shared so much stuff with us tonight, Mario. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Legacies Barber College, what if you are at the grassroots, how do you get their attention? Um, by focusing on your audience, 
who is actually your audience. If you're at the grassroots, it's going to be a little tougher, but not insurmountable because you got to have something that the brand can connect themselves to. So if you're at the grassroots, I, I would have to ask you a few more questions to find out like how grassroots, like have you started or are you about to start? If you're about to start, then yeah, it's too premature. If you started, then that's, that, that, could, that could be fine. It, we would have to ask some more clarifying questions to find out. And if they um, on social media doing some things, sometimes those big companies notice uh, influencers or notice these videos. And the thing is, some of y'all think that you got to have thousands of followers in order to actually be sponsorable, and you don't. What you need is actual engagement. Do people watch your, your posts? Do they comment on the posts? Are they sharing them? And in some cases, you could even collaborate with other friends. And so as a group of y'all, you know, you could have like two of your buddies and two of your friends and present that as a group. Hey, Clara all three of us are coming together as one unit. So when you buy with us, we'll be putting, we'll be doing the product placement and the integration or the ads on all three of our social pages. So there, there are different ways that you can approach it. Again, a brand doesn't just buy your following or just buy your reach. They gotta buy you first. That's why they gave your, your client, your friend 250K because they bought into her first. Who are you? What makes you unique? What makes you different? Then, okay, what are you offering? What are your assets? What, what's the product? What's the thing? What are you pitching? What are you presenting to me? And then they say, do we believe that this person can pull it off? Do they have the team? Do they have the proof? Can they pull it off? But that's typically it. She said they went through her social media too. So I guess it's very important that y'all don't need to be on there smoking weed, drinking. Come on, man, bring crazy it. Crazy stuff. Um, do that stuff in private if y'all do that, because she said that's that was, right. they wanted someone else. But when they went through her, the other person, I'm not going to call it any names, but when they went through the other person's page, there were some things on there that didn't fit good with that yep. corporate brand. That's right. So that's right. The other person basically lost a quarter, $250,000. Quarter of a million. Yeah. Quarter of a mil, gone. Y'all gotta do that on, y'all gotta, look, social media right now is your resume. Social media right now is your portfolio. This is what I'm saying. If you aren't taking pictures, shooting video, getting testimonials from your clients and your customers, making that a part of it. If you're not figuring out how to shoot some stuff from behind the scenes, if you're not figuring out how to have fun on the job and, and capture some of those moments, you're missing out on how you're telling. This is the first time in our life where we actually get to control the narrative of our own story. We, it's not a reporter coming in trying to communicate to other people who we are. We get to be the reporter as to who we are. So how you decide to use that is going to reflect in the opportunities that you get. Because when you put out that kind of positive or that kind of informative or that entertaining or that educational approach and you put that out there consistently, it's going to start to attract the people that want to connect to that and it's gonna be a better look for you when the deals come around. Well, um, I'm gonna put this link up here again. Anything, you dropped so much knowledge on us, Mario. What would you like to leave us with? Mm. I mean, you, you said so much stuff tonight. I mean, I took a lot of notes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, one of the things is it's easy for people to tell y'all, you know, to push through. But when you, when you know, like, I, you know, I'm just learning a little bit about Chin's story. When you know people have been through some things and they're giving you some guidance and some advice, you got to cherish that and you got to act on it. We can't do the action for you. So often what I see happen is that it gets overwhelming because maybe your vision is so big or what you wanna do is, is so glorious that you get a little bit 
maybe stuck or paralyzed because the vision can be so big. So what I want you to do is reverse engineer it. And what that means is I want you to break it down backwards. What's the big goal that you see for yourself? And now what I know, what I want to know is what's the absolute, the absolute smallest step you can take tomorrow towards it. And if every day you decide what's the absolute smallest step that I can take towards it, it starts to not feel as overwhelming. And you start getting wins faster because you can look back at the end of your week and you can see a couple of wins. And then you look back at the end of your month and you can see a few more wins. And then you look back six months and you're like, oh damn, we, we actually are getting here. So I really think reverse engineering your goals and really breaking down step by step. You know, for some of y'all that need some clarity in your life, I got some free tools on my other website. Go to neversettle.tv slash tools never settle dot tv slash t o o l s there's some free worksheets on there that will help you get the clarity on your vision it will help you understand how to set goals better and smarter there's another thing that's on there that's called the fear ladder so if there's something that you are afraid of trying to accomplish it's going to break down the steps of how you can beat that fear down so you can get it done uh what else we got on there we got um the personal mission statement worksheet. Every last one of y'all should have a personal mission statement. Uh, mine is to inspire the human spirit, teach lessons that matter and uncover new perspectives. My overall vision is to motivate people around the world to never settle. So is having that, settle? say that again. Never settle dot. Uh, dot T V as in Victor, T as in Tom, V as in Victor, slash T O O L S tools. All right. But that's it, y'all. That's what I would say. I would say, in closing, I would really say that you know you've hit the roughest part when it's the easiest time to quit. Hmm. You know you've hit the roughest part when it's the easiest time for you to give up. If you hit that part, I need you to dig a little bit deeper. I need you to lean on your face a little bit stronger. I need you to make sure that you're getting some rest, get some exercise, do something, eat right, do something, talk to somebody that can support you, talk to somebody that's, that, that pumps you up. Because if you're right there and you know you've hit that roughest part, when it's the easiest time to give in, that's the moment right there. That's the extra 10%. That's the 10 percenter right there. Everybody else is ready to bail. Not you, not now, not this moment, not your vision. Who loses if you don't show up? All right, what's your theme song, Mario? Your hype song, that's how we gonna play <laughs> Oh man, we got a couple, man, we got, um. Uh, we could go with DJ Khaled, All I Do Is Win. We could go with uh, Drake, Started From The Bottom. We could go with um, uh, Toby and Wigway. We can go with Toby and anything from Toby and Wigway is fly. We could go uh, Rhapsody. Um, Rhapsody's got, got uh, some songs I love, like Oprah and, and, and Michelle. Um, all right, we'll hit with that first one you said. Okay, let's do it. 